Hey guys, Mike Gillette, and we're gonna today take a look at the Tidal Suspension Trainer. If you've been looking at suspension trainers but maybe haven't jumped in, perhaps because of how much they cost, uh, the Tidal model uh, works just the same as the other popular ones in the market and comes in just under about half of that retail price. So if you've been holding off, hold off no longer, take a look at the uh, exercises we're about to share with you and I think you'll see why this is a great piece of gear to add to your arsenal. One of the things that makes it so effective is not just the exercises that work well with this particular configuration, is that it is extremely portable. You can put it in a gym bag, you can take it to a city park, you can string it up almost anywhere. As you can see, we've got it hooked on this power rack just using the uh, adjustable uh, integrated clip. For those of you who live in an apartment or something like that and can't put up chinning bars, those sorts of things, it also comes with a doorway mount. This is how most people uh, I've seen use them. I take something just like this uh, to hotel rooms all the time so that I can continue to get all of my pulling training in, which is hard to do. You can do all manner of push-up training, uh, plant work and so forth off of the floor. It doesn't require a lot of equipment, but for your pulling muscles to get into the act that's a whole nother thing this apparatus right here solves that problem we're going to show you a couple of ways that it does it next one of the great things about the suspension trainer is it allows people to train what I refer to as the pull-up muscles even if they're not at a point where they can accomplish a conventional pull-up just quite yet it's a great bridge tool to get you to that point where you have that kind of strength and what we do to sort of accomplish that progression on that whole uh, pull-up continuum is we start where the weight is easy for you to manage. These suspension straps allow you to basically dial in a level of resistance that's challenging but also achievable for you. So Sam is going to start off as though he were a beginner to suspension training and he's going to use an angle that's not particularly challenging for him. Pay particular attention to the position of his shoulders. He's drawing his shoulders back. That allows him to maintain a neutral spine so that he doesn't collapse and he's training his body as one unit, which is what we should all strive for. All good training is core training. And he's maintaining excellent controlled posture throughout. Now, over time, obviously our beginner trainer if that's you, great, keep working, and you're gonna get to a higher level of resistance. So the way that works is what you'll see Sam do now. He's simply going to adjust the angle relationship of his body relative to the straps. So he's leaning further back now, which means as he's pulling himself up, he's pulling a higher percentage of his body weight. His body mechanics do not change. Good body mechanics are good body mechanics regardless of the amount of resistance that you're working with. He's got a neutral grip, his hands are facing each other, his elbows are close to his body. That allows him to draw his elbows back rather than just pulling with the biceps. This is not just an arm exercise, this is a total body movement. We want to do exercises where your whole body is talking to each other, muscle group to muscle group being run by the nervous system. Now you'll get a chance to see Sam in action. He's going to adjust the straps because he has to raise them up for this next variation. He's going to change the angle relationship considerably because now you're going to get an example of what it looks like after you've been training for a while and you've developed some real strength in this position. So you'll see how uh, quickly he was able to uh, change the position of the straps. And he's going to walk himself back into position. You notice that he's now almost parallel with the floor. Everything else is the same. He's on his heels, shoulder width apart. His Shoulder blades are pulled back, pulling with the elbows, neutral hands, no uh, stress on any of the joints, excellent body mechanics throughout, and he's pulling a lot more weight. Anybody that gets to this point is knocking on the door of a conventional pull-up. The next exercises you're going to see in this progression are really the the most effective things that you can do with a suspension trainer. A suspension trainer allows you to do a couple of things pretty well. It allows you to do a few things extraordinarily well, better than almost any other tool on the market, and that's what we're going to show you now. This is a shoulder series, and it's not just the shoulder muscles that you're accustomed to, to seeing. If you look at the uh, shoulder, there are uh, three heads of the muscle. There is the, uh, the front and the middle and the rear portion, or the anterior, the medial, and the uh, posterior deltoid. The, uh, front of the deltoid gets a lot of activation anytime that you're pushing. So guys that do a lot of 
push-ups, guys that do a lot of dips, guys that do a lot of bench presses. There's a lot of activity going on here. But what people often misunderstand is just how punching works and where punching comes from. It seems because punches come out and away from the body that it is essentially a pushing movement. Punches are really initiated with the muscles of the back that attach to the muscles of the shoulder. And the muscles of the shoulder and, and the back back here can be very difficult for a lot of conventional gym apparatus to work. So what you're going to see now are three different movement variations that all attack that problem and solve it quite decisively. So Sam is going to face away from the camera. He's going to take up the same position that he has in the uh, pulling position. His feet are going to be evenly spaced about shoulder width. He's going to be on his heels. The body is going to be tight. He's going to have a neutral spine. And because we're working the shoulders, it is imperative to retract those scapula, get those shoulders back. If you can imagine how a superhero stands, that's how you want to position yourself relative to the stretch. Now he's going to make a series of letter shapes. The first one is the letter T. This one is particularly effective for hitting this area of the musculature back here. And watch how it looks. He's going to open up the door and then allow the door to close. He's just pivoting on his heels. That slow controlled motion is what you want to see. Don't jerk or the momentum is going to basically bypass the activation of the shoulder muscles. So it needs to be slow and controlled. Now, from the T position, we're going to shift into the Y position, the letter Y. And it's just going to hit the shoulder muscles in a slightly different plane. So imagine that uh, your body is the stem of the letter Y and your arms are going to form the uh, fork portion. It looks just like that. And again, you are really working towards achieving this level of body control. This is an excellent cadence to emulate in your own training. Now, the last letter in the uh, training alphabet for the suspension trainer is the letter I. And it's uh, particularly effective uh, for hitting, again, the uh, front deltoids. That's where you'll feel a lot of the tension. The arms are simply going to go overhead. This is perhaps the most challenging in this uh, position to work. And if you can use all three of those variations in a workout or in a, a cycle or alternating in your workout throughout the week, just to manage the, uh, the variety aspect of your training, you're going to be in great shape. The letter T, the letter Y, and the letter I. Incorporate all of those letters, all of those positions into your training and see how your increased strength of these muscles back here translate the next time you work on the heavy bag. This next progression that we're going to show you using the suspension trainer is for midsection development. Far too many people are laying on the floor doing crunch after crunch. What you want to do is make your core muscle, if we are going to use that term, keep those muscles doing what they're designed to do, which is to stabilize the trunk in motion and or under load. So we're going to get you up off the floor, moving through space, getting the entire body working together all at one time. We're going to have, just like we've done before, a scalable series of exercises to get you doing just that. Now, the uh, first exercise is going to take place very close to the floor. But before we get to that, Sam's going to demonstrate just how to get in to the suspension trainer correctly. Okay, now what Sam is going to do is he's going to assume a plank position. So he's actually going to rest his upper body on his forearms. He's going to get straight and he's going to lift his uh, lower portion off the floor and he's going to be com completely straight from head to toe. This is that same position we've basically been emulating while Sam has been standing, either doing uh, pulling exercises and uh, shoulder work. Now watch closely because the movement here is very subtle. The only movement that you're going to see is as Sam slowly pushes back on his shoulders to the rear and he's maintaining this plank posture and then he's going to reverse that and come all the way forward. This exercise is called the body saw because of the sawing back and forth motion that you're seeing Sam do right now. Staying tight from head to toe, 
lots and lots of control. You can hear Sam breathing. That's an important detail because a lot of people, when they're holding their stomachs tight, have a tendency to hold their breath. That's not helpful to do. Learning to breathe while your muscles are working is important for strength training. It's also important to uh, keeping your wits about you when you're fighting. You have to be able to breathe while dealing with all of the incoming stimulus. Okay, the next version, we're gonna get Sam a little further away from the floor. He's going to get up on his hands as though he's uh, simulating the beginning position of a push-up. So now he's up in the air, and what's gonna happen is his knees are gonna track forward. He's just simply gonna draw his knees in towards his midsection and back out. So what's interesting about this movement is that not only is he working his midsection and working some balance, he's also strengthening his shoulder stability while maintaining that position while everything from the waist down is in motion. And finally, the last variation of our core series is a combination of what you just saw except performed with straight legs. We call this a pike position in gymnastics and he's going to basically draw his glutes, his hips way up in the air. The shoulders don't move. And notice he's almost getting completely vertical there. That's something you can emulate if you have sufficient shoulder strength. Most people can only get to kind of an A-frame or a pup tent type posture. The shoulders will strengthen in time and eventually your spine is gonna get closer and closer to that vertical position. That's where you wanna end up as strength increases. Oftentimes with boxers, the legs are overlooked. We may think because we do road work or we jump rope that we're working our legs. And it's true that we are conditioning the legs to handle fatigue, but we're not strengthening the legs doing that. It's important to have legs that are strong because all power comes from the ground, through your feet, through your legs, transferred all the way out that kinetic chain, ultimately emanating from your hands. But strong legs, strong hips are really the key to success in any sphere of athletics. So we're gonna show you how you can use the suspension trainer to train your legs, get them stronger, with a couple of progressions that'll do that as your own strength increases. Now the first one is a great variation of the squat because using this equipment, you can actually put yourself in a mechanically perfect squat, which if you go into a gym and look at people who've been training a long time, you'll see people that are doing an incorrect squat after years of hoist bells. So the main thing to uh, keep in mind while using the suspension trainer, keeping the shoulders pulled back so that we've got a good neutral spine. And because we have the ability to lean away, we have the ability to maintain almost a vertical shin configuration. The reason that's good is it because it takes so much stress off the knee joint. If anyone has been avoiding squats because, oh, they're bad for my knees or my knees hurt and I don't want to hurt them further, this will take care of that. Strong knees are healthy knees. We want you to have healthy knees. So shoulder width, sometimes a little bit wider if that's more comfortable for you to squat on the heels. The body position doesn't change, just the angle. Notice he's going beyond the point of parallel. That simply means that when he's in the bottom position, the top of his legs are below the parallel position with the floor. Those shins are nearly vertical. That should be physically a very comfortable squat for Sam to be performing right now. Now the next variation that we'll show you, assuming that you've gotten reasonably strong with this movement, is something you may have seen back when we did our ropes training series, and that is the jumping squat. Now the jumping squat, don't jump to conclusions, it's not a big, big jump. We're just going up off the surface of the floor, we're not really going for altitude. Just accelerating yourself enough to get up off the floor, repetition after repetition requires a stronger muscle contraction and will increase your strength accordingly. So it will look like this down into a correct squat and up off the floor. Now not only are you developing leg strength here, but a few seconds of this really elevates the heart rate. Excellent. Now the last variation is not only more of a demand in terms of strength, we're also increasing coordination, we're also increasing balance, because mechanically, it's a harder exercise to pull off. It's a one-legged squat. So you're gonna be pushing with one leg, and the other leg is simply gonna be moved out of the way until it's turn to uh, be exercised. So in this case, Sam is simply 
taking his uh, off leg, moving it forward, coming all the way down, driving through the heel. Now, the one difference here is we're not staying back on the heels because the bounds would be too precarious. We don't want to do anything that makes the exercise dangerous. So he is using his foot flat on the floor to get as much contact surface, to have as much of a stable base as possible, and then he can switch it over to the other leg and perform the equivalent number of repetitions there. Everything else stays the same. Shoulders are back, spine is neutral, really vertical shin here, excellent range of motion with a uh, display of balance here that you should really seek to emulate as your own training advances.